find the unit vector in the direction of the resultant of the vectors. So here we have three vectors, one vector, two vector and three vector. We have to add them and then we will find the resultant and the unit vector in the direction of that resultant is asked in the question. So let's find the resultant first and then we will find the unit vector along it. Now how to find the resultant? Let's just add the three vectors. To get a term in the front of i cap, we will add all the terms in front of i cap. So we have 1 plus minus 1 plus 3 and the sum is 3 i cap. Now let's look at the terms in front of j cap. They are 2, 2 and 1. When we add them, we get 5. So 5 j cap. And what about k cap? All the terms in front of k cap, if we add them, we add 3 plus 1 plus 0 and we get 4 k cap. Now this is the resultant r vector. Now we want to find the unit vector along r vector. See, the interesting thing is, the unit vector along r vector is in the direction of r vector. So the direction is same. But if I divide r vector by its own magnitude, then I will get a special vector which has direction in the direction of r vector. But the magnitude of that vector is unity. And this vector is a unit vector along the direction of r vector. Yes. So this is the unit vector r cap. Now let's find out what is the value of r cap. For this, we need what is the magnitude of r vector. Now this magnitude is very simple to calculate. It is whole under root of 3 square plus 5 square plus 4 square. And this is giving us 5 root 2. Now let's see the unit vector unit vector r cap is 3i cap plus 5j cap plus 4k cap and let's divide this by the magnitude of r vector. This is 5 root 2. Now this is our unit vector and we can write it in different different styles. One style could be like this. r cap is equal to 3 by 5 root 2 i cap and then 1 by root 2 j cap and then 4 by 5 root 2 k cap. So let's see the option and we can find that option B is the right answer for our question. With what acceleration A should the box, by box we mean the bigger box. Can you see the bigger box? Right. So with what acceleration A should the box in the figure descend so that the block of mass capital M exerts mg by 4 on the floor of that box. So here we have a big box and we will call this big box as our elevator. And there is a floor of this elevator. This is the green floor. All right. Now, it is said that this elevator is undergoing some acceleration and we have to find what is the value of this acceleration if the block of mass capital M exerts a force mg by 4 on the floor of this bigger box or the elevator. Now, if the force exerted on the floor is mg by 4, the floor will exert an equal and opposite force. So the force exerted by the floor on the block is also mg by 4, right? And we will call it normal reaction. Now, if the normal reaction on the block is mg by 4, can we calculate what is the common acceleration of this elevator and the block of mass capital M? Can we find this acceleration? This is the question. You will say, well, yes, we can. We can see this problem in ground frame of reference. If we are standing on the ground, we will draw the free body diagram of this block like this. We will say the block has some acceleration A in the downward direction with respect to ground. We are standing on the ground. So the acceleration is A. All right. There is mg in the downward direction and there is some normal reaction in the upward direction. Normal reaction is equal to mg by 4. All right. 
Now, what is the equation? The equation goes like this. Mg minus Mg by 4 is equals to Ma. Mass times acceleration. Right. This is the equation from Newton's second law. And the acceleration from it is coming out to be 3g by 4. Can you see the right option? Yes. Option C is the right answer for our question. Now, before we go, I will tell you one more trick to solve this problem. The other way goes like this. We won't stand on the ground. In fact, we will stand inside the lift. Now, if we are standing inside this lift, we will see that the block of mass capital M is not moving at all with respect to us. This block stays at rest without any acceleration with respect to us. Now, what are the forces acting on this block? One force is capital Mg in the downward direction and another force is normal reaction. But can we apply the Newton's law? No, we cannot because we are in non-inertial reference frame. Now, to get an equation, we will take the help of pseudo force. The pseudo force on the block of mass uh, capital M will be in the opposite direction to the acceleration of our reference frame. So, acceleration of our reference frame was in downward direction. We will apply pseudo force in upward direction and the value of pseudo force is capital M times A. Now, we can write the equation. The equation goes like this. Mg is equals to mg by 4 plus ma. Can you see it? Yes. And this equation also gives us the same acceleration. Yes. So, option C will be the right answer for our question. A block is capped on a frictionless inclined surface with an angle of inclination alpha. So, here is an inclined plane. It is frictionless. The angle of inclination is alpha. Now, if we usually keep any block on a frictionless inclined plane, it slips down the incline, right? But we have a special case over here. We say that the inclined wedge is given an acceleration A to keep the block stationary with respect to inclined plane. So, in our question, we are actually accelerating this entire inclined wedge and this makes the block of mass small m not to slip either down the incline nor go up the incline. So, with respect to the incline, our block remains at rest. Now, this is our case. And what is asked? It is said, what is the magnitude of acceleration A equal to? So, we have to find what is the acceleration of this incline wedge so that our block stays at rest with respect to incline. This is the question. Now, how do we approach this question? Well, I will show you the simplest approach. The approach goes like this. We will choose a reference frame, a beautiful reference frame. And our reference frame is the reference frame of the incline itself. Now, in this reference frame, we will say that our block is not accelerating because we are in the reference frame of incline and the block is not accelerating with respect to incline. Therefore, the block is not accelerating with respect to our reference frame. All right. Now, if there is no acceleration, the forces must be balanced out, right? But we cannot apply Newton's law directly. So we will take the help of pseudo force and imaginary force, pseudo force. Now, in which direction should I draw the pseudo force? You will say, we must draw the pseudo force in the direction opposite to the acceleration of our reference frame. Right. So our pseudo force acts in backward direction. And this is Ma. And another force on this block is Mg, like always. And the third force on this block is normal reaction like this. So everything must be balanced out in our reference frame. Now, let us break everything up. But before that, I will mark some angles. This angle is alpha, you can see it. And the other angle we can see is alpha also. All right. Now, let's break everything into components. One component of Ma, which is in this direction, up the inclined direction, has the value Ma cos of alpha. Another component of Ma, which is in this direction, perpendicular to the incline, has the value 
एम ए साइन ऑफ अल्फा वेरी नाइस नाउ लेट्स डू द कंपोनेंट ऑफ एम जी वाई नॉट वन कंपोनेंट ऑफ एम जी विच इज अलॉन्ग दिस डायरेक्शन इज एम जी कॉस ऑफ अल्फा अनदर कंपोनेंट ऑफ एम जी विच इज अलॉन्ग दिस डायरेक्शन इज एम जी साइन ऑफ अल्फा ऑल राइट नाउ If in our reference frame the acceleration of this block is zero, we must have m a cos alpha is equal to m g sine of alpha. Can you see it? Yes. Now we mean acceleration a comes out to be g tan alpha. If this is the acceleration of our wedge, then our block will not slip on this wedge. and option d will be the right answer for our question one end of a massless rope which passes over a massless and frictionless pulley p is tied to a hook c so one end of this rope is tied over here this is the hook c and the shape of this hook is also looking like c hmm. well while the other end is free the other end of this rope is free maximum tension the rope can bear is 840 newton okay so the maximum value of the tension can be 840 newton if we give it more tension the rope will definitely break okay with what value of maximum safe acceleration can a man of 60 kg climb on the rope so we have to tell what can be the maximum possible value of the acceleration of this man of mass 60 kg what can be the maximum possible acceleration this is the question now we will apply newton's second law and solve this question let us assume the tension in this string to be t now if the tension is t on the man tension is acting in the upward direction and mg on the man is acting in the downward direction now we can write the equation like this simple it is tension minus mg this is equal to ma this is equal to ma now we can see when the tension is maximum acceleration can be maximum otherwise if we have less values of tension then the acceleration will also have less values but we want the maximum possible acceleration therefore we will take the maximum possible tension and the tension can be maximum up to 840 newton not higher than that so let's take the maximum tension now we will say 840 minus mg mass is 60 g is 10 so 840 minus 600 this is equal to m a mass is 60 all right so we have 240 divided by uh, mass mass is 60 this is equal to a and it is coming out to be a uh, 4 and we can mark option c as the right answer for our question an insect i can see the spider right now an insect crawls up a hemispherical surface very slowly the coefficient of friction between the insect and the surface is 1 by 3 so mu is equals to 1 by 3 if the line joining the center of the hemispherical surface to the insect makes an angle alpha with the vertical the maximum possible value of alpha is given by so we have to tell what is the maximum possible value of alpha this is the angle alpha what can be the maximum possible value of this angle now you can see that the insect can crawl up to a certain height it cannot go beyond that height and we have to tell what is the maximum value of alpha now let us say the insect is at its peak height at this peak height the value of friction is also at its peak right so friction is at its peak the friction cannot go beyond this value the insect can also not climb beyond this particular height now we can say that at this particular instance the tangent to the surface is like this 
it is making an angle alpha with the horizontal right we can see that now if this angle is alpha we can say that uh, mg is acting in downward direction like this and the angle of mg with this line is also alpha can we say that right now there is a force on the spider one component of mg is mg cos alpha and the other component of mg is down the incline or down this imaginary tangent as mg sin alpha can we see that right now the friction force is at its peak value and what is the peak value of friction come on tell me the peak value of friction it is normal reaction times mu so friction is normal reaction times mu okay now normal reaction is normal reaction over here we can see is mg cos alpha right so normal reaction is mg cos of alpha what is the value of mu well in the question mu was given to be 1 by 3 we will put the value later on so mg cos alpha times mu is the force up the incline right so we can write mg cos alpha times mu the force up the incline must be equal to the force down the incline because at this position the insect will not slip it will slip after that if it tries to climb higher up then it will slip but at this particular height it is stable so this is equal to mg sine alpha right now this means that mu is equals to 10 alpha right mu is equals to tan alpha alpha is tan inverse mu we got the angle alpha the maximum possible angle alpha and in the question it was said that uh, mu was 1 by 3 so we can use another formula we can say that cot alpha is equal to 1 by mu and mu was 1 by 3 therefore cot alpha in our case will be equal to 3 cot alpha is equals to 3 and let us see the option we can see that option A is exactly the right answer for our question.